Come on, clap your hands with him. And sing with him. Trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I had to cry sometimes. I had to cry sometimes. Oh, trouble in my way. Thank God for those that are in sanctuary and those who are in our live streaming audience. 
And we're coming to you live today from Zion Temple First Pentecostal Church at 3771 Reading Road here in Cincinnati, Ohio. And to all that are listening to the sound of my voice, we say to you, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's prayer time in the temple, and we're going to ask everyone who is here if they would stand, please, as we pray before the Lord. And we want you to remain standing until we have read our scripture lesson as well. If you have a request from the Lord, just raise your hand up as we pray and as a witness that I have a request from the Lord. And then we will pray our prayer for today. Father God, I thank you for everyone who has come. I pray that you remember all of us, all of, remember all of the hands that are raised and all these requests that have been made here in the house of God. Lord, we need you. We have always needed you, but we need you now even more than what we did before. I pray that you'll remember our congregation. Remember those who are sick and afflicted, those who are in the hospital, those that have had sorrow and grief, hallelujah, recently in their family. I pray that you will comfort them and bless them in a very special manner. I also pray that you will lead, guide, and direct us as we preach the sermon today. Let your anointing be upon your servant and help us to speak only the words that you want spoken to this congregation. Bless us, Lord, and remember those that are out of the ark of safety. We pray that they will be saved before it is too late. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let us turn in the word of the Lord to the book of James. The book of James. Uh, chapter 2. And we're going to read our scripture text there. We're going to read chapter 2, verse 21 through 26. That's in the book of James. Chapter 2, verse 21 through 26. When you have it, say amen. Let us begin to read in verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by his works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled with saying, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man, a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers and sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated in the house of God. Hallelujah. A scripture that we want to focus upon is verse 24. And it says, you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. And our subject for today is justification by faith and works. Justification by faith and works. The book of James was written by the Lord's brother. There are three men in the New Testament who had the name of James. One was James, John's brother. The second one was James the Less, the son of Alphaeus. And the last one was James, the Lord's brother. 
He was the pastor of the first Pentecostal church in Jerusalem. And he presided over the first apostolic council in Jerusalem. And these are the reference scriptures. I didn't give them to Brother Rodney, but I want you to have them, and I'm just going to read them, brother, my brother. Matthew 13, 55, Mark 6 and 3, Galatians 1, 19, Acts chapter 12, verse 17, and Acts chapter 15, verse 13 through 24. James was also called the just because of his holiness of life and his rigid adherence to the practical morality of the law. Hallelujah. James and Paul wrote about works. In Romans and also in Ephesians, Paul wrote that it's not by works lest any man should boast. But James said, faith without works is dead when it is alone. Hallelujah. And many theologians have wrestled with this and have wanted to say that one was right and the other one was wrong and they were not the same, but that's not true. Actually, Paul and James both preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now what they're saying is that we need works for to complete our Christian walk, hallelujah, and we need works to prove, amen, our faith in God. But we also need grace to save us because we are saved by grace and not, not of ourselves, because it is the gift of God. Hallelujah. But James wrote this gospel, or this, he wrote this book as a practical book. Amen. Now we have Proverbs in the Old Testament, but we have James in the New Testament. He not only wrote about salvation, but he wrote about that if we are saved, if we are saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, we need some works to go with our faith. Amen. Now, I know this is hard to preach because I don't already preach at God's grace, but I'm preaching that without works, Without works, our, hallelujah, Christian life is only a mere profession of faith. Hallelujah. Without works, Zion, hallelujah, would not be able to function properly. Hallelujah. Without works, Everybody sitting around and saved and vaccinated, we hope. E hallelujah. But without works, this church could not survive. Hallelujah. Now, everybody has a part. Everybody has something that they need to do. Amen. You got all the powers that are here. You have the talents that are here. You have the wisdom that is here, but we need works. Hallelujah. Because faith without works is dead because it is alone. Hallelujah. And I hope I can preach this right. Hallelujah. Everybody has to have works that are saved. Hallelujah. In this text, in verse 14, he said, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say that he hath faith and hath not works? Can faith save him? Hallelujah. Well, the answer to that is, hallelujah. Faith by itself cannot save him. 
because there is something else that he needs to do along with his faith. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a little bit. Hallelujah. There is a genuine human effort that must be put forth. Yes, we are baptized in Jesus' name. Yes, we're filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, we believe in the apostolic faith. But hallelujah, we need to add to our faith works. Hallelujah. Ah, blessed quiet. Maybe we better reverse it and start praising him again. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'll show you what I'm talking about. I know it's a new message for you. But he said, this is an example. If you saw somebody, a brother or sister in our church that was destitute and was naked and didn't have no food, would you help them? The church say amen. amen. Yes. Yes, we would help them. We would not leave them in that state and still keep shouting and rejoicing and speaking in tongues and shouting all over the church. But there is a human need that needs to be fulfilled. Hallelujah. But evidently, the ones that James was writing to was neglecting to take care of their own. Hallelujah. He said in verse 16, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace. Be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give not to, uh, unto them the things that are needful for their body. What doth it profit? Hallelujah. It doesn't profit us to, hallelujah, put emphasis upon the small things and forget about the big things. Hallelujah. We need to take care of each other. Hallelujah. If there is somebody in the church that needs help, we need to help them. If there is somebody that's hungry, we need to feed them. If there is somebody who doesn't have the right clothing, we need to help them. Because we are justified in the eyes of God by faith and works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Said even so, if faith hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Hallelujah. He challenged whoever it was to show him their works, and then I will show you my works. Hallelujah. The works that James was doing was because he was following holiness and a rigid life. Hallelujah. He wanted to be in the faith, but he also wanted to perform works that were necessary for necessary purposes. Hallelujah. He wanted his religion to be pure. He wanted the things that he did to count with God. Hallelujah. He said in James 1 and 22, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, because when you're hearing it and then don't do it, you're deceiving your own self. Hallelujah. The book of James is a protest against hypocrisy and stretches, stresses faith in God coupled with good works. James 1.27 said, pure religion 
and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. Hallelujah. We need works with our faith. Hallelujah. James stresses that works are necessary for pure religion and holy living. Hallelujah. They are something that we must do. And if there ever was a time that we need to rise and shine for the Lord, it's right now. Hallelujah. I'll say that again. It's not a time to sit back. It's not a time to be lazy. It's not a time to let everybody else do it. But we got to reach out to those that are hurting. We must reach out to those that are cast down. We must reach out to those that don't have what we have. Hallelujah. Because I believe this with all my heart that somebody is watching Zion and somebody is watching me and somebody is watching you to see how we are going to react whenever various situations come. They're looking for us to show love. They're looking for us to give people what they need. They're looking for us to take care of our own. Hallelujah. But if we have no works to go with our faith, hallelujah, it is dead. I said it's dead being alone. Hallelujah. Faith without works is dead being alone. Hallelujah. 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 We need works. James chapter 2, 17 through 20, he said, Faith without works is dead. Hallelujah. Being alone. If all we have today is faith, 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 just a little bit more faith, and we don't have any works, it's dead because it is alone. Hallelujah. The meaning of the word works is number 2041, is ergon, and it means to toil as an effort or occupation. It also means the kind and good deeds that we do for other people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It means doing labor. We labor. We labor hard not only to get the gospel over to people but to show them the love of God. Hallelujah. We work hard to let them know that we are not just stuck up Christian, but we are people who earnestly and hallelujah, unequivocally believe in lifting the spirit of those that are around us. Hallelujah. We're not holding back just for our own people. We're not just holding back just for those that belong to this church. But we're reaching out to somebody else. Said if you need a helping hand, you can count on me. If you need somebody to take you to the drugstore, I'll take you to the drugstore. If you need a ride to the hospital, I'll give you a ride. If you're sick, Hallelujah, and you can't get well. Hallelujah, because you can't afford your medicine. I'll buy it for you. Works, works, works. 
Don't just be, say, depart in peace, be warm, be clothed, and don't give them what they need. Faith without works is dead. Being alone. Now dead, dead means a corpse, means a dead body, lifeless, unresponsive, <laughs> inactive hallelujah so that is a, a dead church hallelujah now I know y'all ain't gonna like me after I say this because we're not a dead church no we're not a dead church but I'm trying to make a point that if the need arise and there is no response that says something for a group of people if somebody needs some help and we act like we don't even see them and go right by them that does something to their spirit. Now I'm not saying we're going to do that, but I'm just preaching. Is that all right? We want God's blessing to be upon this church. We want God to know that we love him best of all. Hallelujah. We want God to put his favor upon Zion Temple, First Pentecostal Church. Hallelujah. We need works because faith without works is dead being alone. Hallelujah. James gave two examples and I'm going to do both of those and then move on. There was a man in the Bible whose name was Abraham. And Abraham was justified by his works. Hallelujah. Abraham believed God. Abraham was a father of the faithful. But James said in verse 20, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? 29, 21, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with works and by works was faith made perfect or complete? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture was fulfilled, was said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, for he was called the friend of God. Hallelujah. We need works and righteousness before we can be justified. Hallelujah. I like the story. I'm going to read it. I was going to preach it, but I guess I'll just teach it. But Abraham had waited 25 years to receive his son. Promise to him was made when he was 75 years old, but he was almost 100 years old before Isaac was born. Hallelujah. He received him from deadness. He received him from a time when he was dead and Sarah was dead. God gave him his son. He circumcised him. He had a big amen to do for him. But one day God said to Abraham, Take thy son 
thy only son and go up to the mountain where I will show you and I want you to sacrifice him to the Lord. Hallelujah. Now can you imagine, church, in your heart, God giving you a son after 25 years. He's your only son. And he tests you in your faith to see how strong that your faith is and says, take your son, your only son, up to the mountain and kill him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now Abraham could have said, you're the one that gave me my son. You're the one that opened up the womb and quickened us so that we could have the son. And now you are telling me, hallelujah, to take him to Mount Moriah and kill him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the Bible said he rose up early in the morning and he saddled his ass and he took two young men with him, clave some wood, for the burnt offering rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. On the third day, he looked out and he saw that he had come to the place. He told the two young men that were with him, he said, you stay here because the lad and I, we are going up to worship and then we're coming back and we'll be right back down to you, hallelujah. By prophecy, he was saying that I believe in God. I believe in God and I'm going to put some works with what I believe. I could not stay home and say I believe in God, nor could I refuse to take Isaac with me and say I believe in God, and I could not take him up there knowing that's my only begotten son, lay him on the altar and killing him unless I believe God. Hallelujah. But I'm just trying to show you something that the Lord showed me. If we have faith, we have to couple that faith with works. We have to get up from where we are and go to where the Lord told us to go. We have to go there believing that I'm going to take care of business, whatever it might be, but I'm coming back again. Because God is going to fulfill his word. He told me in the 15th chapter of Genesis, hallelujah, that my seed would be as the stars in the heaven and as the sand in the earth. And through me and through my seed, all the families of the earth would be blessed, which was a prophetic thing concerning Jesus Christ. So how is he going to come through Isaac and raise up a Messiah if he's dead. Right. Hallelujah. So I'm not going to stagger at the promise of God. I'm not going to disbelieve God, but I'm going to keep on believing him. But if I truly believe that God is who he is, and he can do what he says he can do. I'm going to Mount Moriah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I could sit here in the house all day and say, I'm going to be the father of many nations. I could sit here and say what God has already promised to me. I know he's going to give it to me. But he asked him to get up out of his seat and leave his house and go to Mount Moriah. Hallelujah. Abraham took the wood. This is in the 27th, 22nd chapter of Genesis. Abraham took the wood and the, for the burnt offering, he laid it upon Isaac, his son, and he took the fire in his hand 
and a knife. And they went, both of them, together. Now, Isaac is getting really curious now. Uh, Daddy, I ain't no dummy. Uh, but I want to respect you as my daddy. So I ask you as a father. He spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, I respect you. Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see all the ingredients for a sacrificial worship, but I don't see who's going to get killed and who's going to live. I, I don't see that. Hallelujah. But Abraham said unto him, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And so they went, both of them, together. Hallelujah. Verse 9, they came to a place which God told him of. Abraham built an altar there. He laid the wood in order. He bound his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Now this is interesting. Isaac doesn't say anything. He says nothing. He asked where the sacrifice was, but when his father put the wood on the altar and made an altar and strapped him on it and took the knife to kill him, he didn't say anything because he got it. My daddy is going to kill me. But he did not know ah, what was going to happen after a while. But in Abraham's mind, he believed that if I kill this boy, God is going to raise him up. Because my faith has gone beyond just believing. I'm striving to do the works that God asked me to do. He said, take your son up on Mount Moriah and sacrifice him to the Lord. Abraham said, that's what I'm going to do. Hallelujah. But I believe. But I believe, but I believe, but I believe that if I stick this knife through his heart, God is going to raise him up. Hallelujah. I believe in my heart what God told to me. But I also believe in my heart that God is still going to give me my son. Because he promised in the 12th chapter and he promised in the 15th chapter that through your seed will all the families of the earth be blessed. So the blessing is going to come through Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 tribes of Israel. Hallelujah. So if I kill him, he will be raised from the dead. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 and 17 said, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, 
that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Catch this now. Accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he had received him in a figure. Hallelujah. When Abraham stretched back his hand to stab his only begotten son in the heart, God sent an angel. Hallelujah. He said, Abraham, Abraham. He said, here I am. Hallelujah. Now God knows, hallelujah, that you love him. Now God knows that you fear him. Hallelujah. Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. Verse 12, for now I know that thou fearest God seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. Now, hallelujah. Sometimes God might ask us to do the thing that doesn't make sense to us, but if God is telling us to do it and our faith can be made complete and we can be justified in the eyes of the Lord because we obeyed him and did his will. Hallelujah. It's worth it all. But God is good. I say God is good. Guess what? <laughs> His name is Jehovah Jireh. Guess what? The Lord provided a sacrifice. When he lifted up his eyes and dropped the knife down, behold, behind him, it was behind him, a ram was caught in the thicket. And Abraham went and looked to and took the ram and offered him up as a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, shut up. Abraham called that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said today, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Hallelujah. The angel called to Abraham out of heaven a second time and said, Myself, by myself, have I sworn, saith the Lord, because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, in multiplying I will multiply thee, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and the sand as upon the seashore, and the seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. Hallelujah. And thy seed shall all, in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, and because thou hast obeyed my voice. Hallelujah. Everybody is going to get a blessing. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful, church? But when I was reading this, and I'll be honest, when I was reading it, this is a new book for me to preach out of, really. But when I was looking at it, I couldn't get the connection. How could faith and works be connected when Paul said they were not connected? But I got the answer to that. And how could Abraham be justified or made righteous or become the friend of God, hallelujah, just by taking his only son up to a mountain to kill him? It was obedience. It was obedience. The key is obedience. He tells him to do it, but he could have sat in the house and said, I ain't taking that boy up there. 
but he would have missed a blessing of a lifetime because his works made his faith perfect or complete. He had to move. He had to move from where he was and go to where God wanted him to go. And when he moved from where he was and went where God wanted him to go, there was a blessing waiting for him. You got to get to a place where only God can bless us. What he tells us to do might not make sense. What he tells us to do might not even be in something that we're thinking about. But if the Lord tells you, do it. Do it. Do it. He's got a reason for what he has said. Hallelujah. 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 Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar? That's a question. He was justified. Was not Abraham, I'm sorry, seeing thou that how faith wrought with his works and by his works was faith made perfect hallelujah the scripture was fulfilled which saith, abraham believed god and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was also called the friend of god hallelujah now what this means abraham was declared righteous in the eyes of God. Now you say, well, you have to be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost before you can become righteous. But under the old covenant from Genesis to Malachi, hallelujah, you could believe God and it would be counted to you for righteousness. So when he combined his faith with his works, God justified him. And he was declared righteous in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, what does that mean? It means that he got the entire favor of God. He was saved. He was saved because of his obedience. He was saved because of the works that he did. He was made righteous through his works. He was perfected through his works. He had to go to the mountain and he had to sacrifice his son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In my conclusion, no, not my conclusion. Next, next. <laughs> He also spoke about Rahab. Now, I won't take time to go there, but if you want to go and look at it, you can. It's in the book of Joshua, chapter 2, almost the entire chapter, but especially verses 8 through 16, and also in Hebrews 11 and 31. This was another example that he gave how that faith and works brings justification. Rahab was a harlot, and Joshua sent two spies, two young men, to the city of Jericho to look at the city to see what was going on, and then come back and give him a report. When Jericho heard that Israel had defeated Sion and, uh, and the other king, they got afraid of Israel, and then they heard that there were two men that had came into the city to spy out the city. Somebody said they went into Rahab's house. Amen. Amen. They went into the harlot's house over there. 
So they came to her house and asked her, did two men come in here? And she said, yes, but I don't know where they went. But uh, she was not really telling the truth because she had took them up on the roof and put stacks of flax over top of them and kept them up there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But she asked them to spare her life. Hallelujah. I believe that you're going to get the city. I believe that Jericho is going to be torn down. I believe that the walls is coming down. Hallelujah. But I want you to save me, save my mother, save my father, save my brethren, save all my house. Hallelujah. And I will help you to avoid being killed if you promise me that I can be saved. Hallelujah. The men told her that if you don't tell about us and you don't put us on front street, we will make sure to look out for you when Jericho falls. Rahab lived on the corner of the wall. She took a scarlet thread and let them down through the window all the way down to the ground, told them to go into the mountains, stay there three days, and then you can leave and they won't catch you. But I want you to save me and my house and my family and everybody that belongs to me. They said to her, make sure that all of you is in the house. And this scarlet thread that you let us down on to escape, leave it in your window. Hallelujah. And when Jericho falls, you will be saved. Hallelujah. Now, I ain't got time to do too much more, but, but she was saying, I'll have them all in the house, and the scarlet cord will be out of my window, but I still want to be saved. And God had told them that the walls were going to come tumbling down. But guess what? One house... <laughs> One house was still standing when all the walls fell. One house was still on the corner, on the wall. The walls fell straight down. They went in on all four sides, but there was one house that was on the wall. Woo! With a red scarlet thread coming out the window. It was Rahab's house. I said it was Rahab's house. Rahab could have turned them in, but she didn't because she wanted to save her house. And she believed that God had given them the city and she believed that the walls were coming down. But she said, I want somebody to save me and my family so that we don't die. She likewise was justified by works. Hallelujah. When the walls of Jericho fell, Joshua told them to go in and get her and her family and bring them out of the city because they were going to destroy the city. Hallelujah. And they brought them out and made them a part of Israel, put her in the camp with Joshua, put her in amongst the children of Israel, and she became one of the women that are in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Woo, hallelujah. 
I wonder if I could get a witness. Hallelujah. She is in his genealogy. She was justified by faith and by works. She was justified because she put faith and works together and made it a part of her life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 26. Whereas the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Hallelujah. In order for her and Abraham to be justified, they had to have works. They had to have works. But in the grace and truth dispensation, the apostolic church still has to have works. We must prove to everybody that we are who we say we are. Hallelujah. We must show them the light that they are looking for. Matthew 5, 16 said, let your light so shine before men. They may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. May the Lord bless you, may he strengthen you, and may he help you. But all of us must add works to our faith before we can be justified. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hope you.